There we go. And we are live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey. today hey. is another uh, interview, the ISPWP series of interviews of our wedding photographer members. Uh, the ISPWP is the, where you can find the world's best wedding photographers. Uh, they are all uh, pre-screened, pre-approved, and pre-voted in by all of their uh, mem uh, other peers. So uh, they really are the top of the, uh, of, the, of the wedding photography world. And today we have a treat. We have, I guess we're continuing our, our Germany theme because we had Stephen Herrschaft like last time. Uh, uh, we have uh, Patrick and Rosa Engel, and I'm going to try and pron pronounce this correctly, Aachen. Yeah, that's correct. Is that close? Yeah. Okay. Very right. good. I'm doing my best. My, I never took German, so I had to take French. I never took it German. That's perfect. Yeah. So uh, why don't we just get started by having you two guys spend a little bit of time just telling us about uh, who you are, about your business, about uh, any of your background, and, and uh, just give, give us an introduction. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Rosa wanted me to start. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Patrick, um, I, um, I shoot weddings or I'm a photographer since, um, five years. No, actually six years, six years now. And, um, first, the first years I did the weddings, uh, just for my own. The first year I started with photography was, um, pretty exciting because, um, <clears throat> my first, my very first wedding was a 10 hour wedding. And actually I have to confess, that I didn't know anything about weddings, about wedding photography. Um, I, I did some, let's say, holiday stuff like you, what, what you do when you are on vacation. And I thought, okay, I, I can do, I can manage a camera, but I was not able to imagine what, um, what a wedding was. Wedding, the first wedding was so exhausting for me. After I came home, I was like, mm. Shit, sorry. <laughs> this this was a this was a wedding, and I just I just did I just did the photos, and I uh, didn't realize that I did uh, that I had to do um, the editing and the culling uh, that took me another thirty to forty hours or whatever, and um, yeah, that was my very first experience with a wedding. And when I started as a photographer, I um, I didn't have. I didn't have weddings in my mind. It was like, okay, um, yeah, it sounds interesting. Could be, could be an easy job. Could be easy money, but it wasn't. It was um, so definitely not easy. Yeah. yeah, it is. But how did you get yeah. started in uh, in photography, though? Were you did you do some other type of photography first, or no, actually not. Um, the little story um, was that um, I was um, I worked as a project manager. Um, in a company uh, which um, developed software, and um, then I had a um, then I made a decision um, because of some private stuff. I decided to go to the um, Camino de Santiago, mm -hmm. which is in Spain, uh, at least that's, for that's two weeks. That's on my bucket list. I've, that's on my list of things to do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really recommendable. You should do that. It's a um, very, very special experience to do this. And did um, you the entire, the, long, the whole distance? No, unfortunately not. I just had two weeks, so I had to decide which, which part. And I wanted to, um, to arrive in Santiago de Compostela. Um, and um, yeah, but these two weeks, I met so many people, um, which are still friends. And... Um, that was a very unique and a wonderful experience for me. And wh when I came back home, I was maybe, I, I would say I was sort of different, a different mm -hmm. um, man or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to quit my job and wow. I decided to, to become a wedding photo uh, a photographer, sorry, not wedding photo, just a photographer. So that was, um, that is a little story so it was behind a, this. It, it truly was a life changing experience. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It was. But uh, but why uh, why photography and not uh, architecture or deep sea diving or something else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I thought about different things, but what came up to my mind first was photography. Maybe because I was um sort today would say I was sort of a Uncle Bob photographer mm, okay. and uh, I, I always loved it um my father um he was a super eight filmer mm. and 
um, he he did photography as well. But uh, at that time, I was um, that was pretty much weird for me because he wanted to pose me and my brother all the time <laughs> to take a photo, or whatever, and that was weird. But I think that was was a great influence for me. Okay, so it to, wasn't completely out of the blue. There was some exposure or background in video or photography there. Yeah. More or less, yeah, it was a basis, I think, yeah. Okay, all right. But, uh, what about uh, about you, Rosa? So, how did you end up? doing the photography? Um, that was about two years ago. Patrick just asked me on a Saturday to join him for a wedding and as an assistant and um, carry his bags and do some photos. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he paid you well? It, yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I'm still paying. No, it, <laughs> <laughs> paying every day. <laughs> No, uh, it was such a great experience for me because um, um, I studied design and afterwards I worked in a really boring office job for more than 18 years and doing something creative, um, doing pictures was like, wow, that's what I'm what I'm meant to do mm. and uh, so after he took me with him one time he had to take me with him every time <laughs> I just couldn't stop anymore it was like yeah that's why I'm here I have to do this mm -hmm. well it's an mm -hmm. amazing story because uh, you know you guys have become so accomplished and have won awards in so many different organizations and have grown your business in, in a relatively short amount of time. It's very impressive. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I'm sure it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, sometimes it's, um, you know, it's it's like a bubble. You, the, the wedding photography, um, when you see this on, on Facebook or on, on social media, it's like a, it's like a bubble. And um, sometimes it's um, it's difficult to see what, what um, where you, where you are with your wedding photography, mm -hmm. uh, the development, uh, the awards. Okay, you, you can count this maybe, but um, does it have any meaning um, or not? Or uh, is wedding photography um, everything for us or whatever? Because uh, in the, I would say in the last two years, it's um, yeah, um, we sort of made a development. I would say. Um, I, I, I can say that my, my first Phyllis conference uh, was initial for me. Um, that is That was 2017 in Budapest. And mm -hmm. um, before I did a complete, we did a complete different um, way of, of shooting weddings. It was like posing shoes, posing stuff, posing decoration. Um, we were not interested in the moments. We were just interested to, um, to be called wedding photographer mm -hmm. and today i think it's it's different we we wouldn't say that we are wedding photographers we would say that we are photographers or observers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and you just happen yeah. to be at a wedding <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a that's very, what it's it a is it's a very different mindset it's a very different way to approach it and to think about what you're doing absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. At, yeah at the same yeah. time you have to keep the client in mind because they're paying the bills so um, absolutely so you sure. find that right balance in there yeah yeah. So, sure. Yeah. So we, we talked uh, briefly before about you know some of the things that are important to you uh, and your business, and, and one of the things that came up was was getting close. And um, what what did you mean by that? And how and how does that how does that work into your approach of, of shooting? This closeness. Yeah. That's I, well, Rosa. Yeah, I think there's uh, two very important point in getting close. Um, on the one hand, it means that we are really physically getting close to people, uh, moving um, kind of into the uh, the moment, um, being right next to the persons. Uh, but on the other hand, it means as well um, being close emotionally mm -hmm. and uh, feeling what people feel and being very um, empathet empathetic. empathetic. Is that a right word? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, because uh, we think that this is the most important about being a people photographer, to feel what people feel and to show these feelings in our pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. It's, um, it's, 
it's it's not like um, for, for me at least wedding is just a a ceremony it's a, it's a ritual it's um just like um you you go to a uh, to a event so it's um for me um i hope my my client uh, don't listen to this um but uh, for me wedding is, is not that important it's uh, just um the the circumstances and people coming together and this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and um what what i really much love is um to see these relationships in between these um, very obvious moments, like um, the reception and stuff like this. And in between you, or at least I, I or we see the moments uh, between the people and how they react and how they um, care for each other or not or whatever. And uh, this is a really, really huge opportunity to take photos and to, um, to give something back because uh, um especially in the last year, I had the sense that um, from the feedbacks um, of our customers um, that that was exactly what they expected us to do, mm -hmm. to see these moments and to, to be there, to be invisible and to see these moments and um, not to observe obvious things. Of course, family sh shots and, and uh, group shots and ring shots and whatever, but um, m more important were the um, the things in between, mm -hmm. the moments in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and having that empathetic, as you mentioned, Rosa, uh, that empathetic feeling towards your customer, your clients, um, and having them trust you, they allow you to come closer, and the, the shots become more personal and more intimate. I think. Yeah, as opposed think to so just, too. Just, as opposed to just treating them as another client, right? They, if you have to have that personal connection, and and there's trust there, and there's I guess they open themselves up a bit more to you, mm -hmm. and then you get the really sure. interesting photos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is. Um, we normally talk to our clients before we go to a wedding um, to to become a feeling um, for each other, and uh, this is for, for us. It's it's very important um, to see each other uh, at least on on Skype or FaceTime, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, sometimes it depends on the people and it also depends on our mood on the wedding day, how close we can get and how long does it, how long it takes to, to come closer. Mm -hmm. So some people, um, they give us very easily access to whatever. And some people are different. They, this, this is, um, not in our comfort zone sometimes. So, but we try to, to get out of this comfort zone because, um, we know you both know that it is necessary to to do this kind of photos to be so mm -hmm. close and to to have all the moments. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know you. you and have, to me, yeah. you have mentioned, and, and also I can see it through your photos as well that we'll share in a minute here. Um, the importance of the moments are to you, and and to find uh, those truly unique aspects of the wedding day that are unique just to that client and just to that day, and those are the moments that make that wedding um, unique, right? That make it stand out from the type of photographer that does the exact same photos for every single wedding. But those mm. moments make it unique and special, I think. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Yeah. yeah. But how, well, how do you do that, though? I mean, what are you looking for? I mean, when you're there, you're, you know, you're at the wedding, you've got your camera in your hand. Uh, what goes through your head, though, to look for those moments and to find them and to shoot them? How do you, what's that thought process? Rosa? I would I would say I'm really curious to uh, get to know people. I I like uh, observing, watching people, and like to um, to find out how they are working together as a family, for mm -hmm. example. And um, as Patrick already um, said, sometimes it's easier to get close, sometimes not. That depends on the family structure and um, if people are more introvert or extrovert and i'm really curious about the, those things i i love to watch it and find out how to approach a family yeah. and i think this is what we do on a wedding day we really um really are interested in getting to know how a family works together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we get money for this this is <laughs> a, a cool stuff right it's a nice, it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice bonus <laughs> yeah uh, it's like, um, 
I, I would say that uh, I would agree what, what Rosa said, and it's uh, sometimes it's um, reflecting things which we have in our personal life. We have we have kids and we have a family, and um, some some things we see uh, or we um, would like to take a photo of is um, something which we reflect from our lives. I think mm -hmm. so. I think sometimes we have a lot of uh, photos of, of children. Um, Sometimes we have um, a lot of photos like um, the father of the bride um, weeping and um, trying to to keep his face and and uh, whatever. It's it's like sometimes I see my own father or my own family uh, or my own kids. So it's um, this kind of of motivation I think, which is unconscious, but it's still it's, it's there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's I think that's really an important point because uh, we um, we know that um, things maybe sometimes don't last forever and uh, to to capture those moments of love and connection between people um, is really important to us because we know maybe a couple which is uh, now happily married We'll go to a crisis one day and maybe they will have a look at the photos then and see how happy they were, for example. Or maybe you lose people, maybe elderly people who are on your wedding day with you and happy celebrating and one day they are gone and then you still have the photos. Yeah. That's really really important to us yeah so true that, those that really things. is one of the most rewarding things about wedding photography especially is because yeah. you are capturing all not just the moments but um the family interactions um that are yeah. that they treasure they really do treasure those later on in life and they may not know it right away but mm -hmm. down, down the years they yeah. definitely will and that's because yeah. of you guys that's because of what you do yeah and part of that too i think you talked about um you know not being judgmental and, and i think by not being judgmental about the family like you said maybe they're more introverted maybe they're extroverted maybe you don't agree with the way that they're acting or doing things or maybe there's stress on that day um how do what do you mean by by not being judgmental is that sort of um uh, sort of like that to, to approach all the clients the same way no matter what what the situation Yeah, I think it's um it's a it's a mindset. It's uh, not just uh, for photography for us. It's um we try not to be judgmental even in private life because um I think um you get so much more of um of of of, of persons of of other people um when you when you don't go to other people and be judgmental. When you do this um You are focused on something, and you cannot focus on on the whole thing. I think mm -hmm. it's um, you know, you um, you you cut out some parts of other people's life or of the situation, and um, it's sometimes it it feels weird and it feels strange and it feels uh, bad um, when you be judgment when you are judgmental, and um, so it's sort of a mindset which we yeah it, it's not there it's not we have to switch uh, to be not judgmental it's it's like we have to to take care every day of this and um also on a wedding on a wedding day it's, it's sometimes it's hard because um some couples are so so great and so um thankful and whatever and some couples are like uh, you know um i i would like to go home <laughs> um i have to say but um it's um It gives us it's, it's it's sort of a gift to not to be judgmental, not to be um, in a situation and um, to focus on just a single thing like uh, Brightzilla or whatever. I, I don't I don't care about this because um, that if, has an effect on my work. It has an effect on me or on us as a person, uh, uh, even on in education of our son, for example. Or when we go, um, when we talk to each other and we are judgmental, um, the results are far away. Mm -hmm. you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Rosa, yeah. any thoughts there? Yeah, I think um, we have experienced enough things in life to know that everybody has his own battle and problems and 
um, when we are at a wedding, wedding, we know that we only see a really small part of the life of people and um, maybe if there's a bride really not very nice or something like that or other people, uncles, or we never know uh, what they are fighting with and uh, that's why we just decided to be not judgmental. Mm -hmm. Because we, we don't know what's the problem of this person and if he maybe had a bad day or is going to a divorce or whatever. There can be such a lot of um, issues yeah. with, the, with the person and that's why we decided to do it this way. And the other point is that, that I think um, you can really see in the pictures if the photographer... Um, loves or likes the person he photographs or if he maybe is some kind of judgmental and says no I don't like her and she doesn't look good or something like that it's a, a kind of love within the picture which I can feel yeah. and I want our couples to get pictures uh, which uh, show them um, that we like them, we, we were with them and we um, just took them as they are at, at their wedding day. Yeah, that is a great attitude and, and a great approach and I think it does reflect in the photography. I mean, I think you'd put, you hit on a very good point that weddings for families can be very stressful. There can be all sorts of personal family dynamics going on that you as the photographer just don't know about. So you mm -hmm. have to go in as a professional, you're there to do the job, um, but you need to sort of separate any sort of issues that you have with the client or with the family and, and don't let that be a distraction, right? You still want to deliver great photos. You still want to yeah. give them something to enjoy and, and have them remember the day. And, yeah. Because sometimes, sometimes if you have the bad attitude, you can be a little bit lazier in your photography. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you mm -hmm. say, oh, I don't like these people, oh, I don't like this location, mm -hmm. and, and, and then you don't put the effort into it. So you, yeah, you can't get true. that out of your mind and say, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's uh, that I, I mentioned that um, three years ago, um, I did it like I you described. So that is an exact um, description of, of what I did the years before because I had some bad Saturdays or wedding days, and I was lazy. And, um, yeah, my, my effort was not that much, um, and I was not convinced um, of the location, and it was not that much glamour, and all these excuses. And um, um, so I realized that um, this is very much unimportant. This is so unimportant. This is not important for, for me, and it's not important for the people, because um, uh I really thought that um, the location, the venue, has to be um, very, you know, expensive and, and all this kind of fancy stuff, big cars and whatever. And where sometimes when when I see my old wedding photos, I'm I'm like, what's that? It's it's like you know, it's another person, another another wedding. It's it's another situation, completely another situation. We now we focus on everything. Um, not not on the venue. I mean, it's important for the uh, for the couple maybe because they paid a lot of money for this. Um, but this this is not in the foreground for us. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a lesson that you learn with experience, right? With age and experience, you 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 get past that. And I think that's yeah. one of the things what that I'm very proud of the ISPWP is we do focus on photographers with adequate experience and with with enough weddings under their belt that they've gone through a lot of those stages of learning and overcoming those obstacles and finding themselves in, in photography yeah because you do i think almost everybody would say their first five or ten weddings were awful it's like anything you do the more you do it the better you get at it so uh, unless you're just insanely, insanely talented. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's still a journey. I think it's um I think there's no limit. Um, so it's it's uh, that is the good good stuff for um let's say creative um work. Um, there's no limit. There is no point when you are uh when when everything is is okay when you are finished. So when your development stops, yeah. it's um it's a journey. It's still a journey for us. 
So, well, that's and that's, that's uh, a good question or a good point. What what do you guys do for like personal development? I mean, I know you go to the conferences like the Fearless Conference. Um, yeah. And you know what else do you do? Because different photographers do different things in terms of you know revitalizing their enthusiasm for photography or ongoing learning. Um, so what are, I guess what do you like to do to keep, keep developing, keep improving? And do you have any concrete plans in the next couple of years that you're shooting towards or that you're, you have a goal towards? Yeah. Um, Rosa, w w will you start? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a scheme. <laughs> in, in, in fact, uh, I don't go very much to workshops or coachings or uh, conferences. The first time this year I was at a conference and uh, I think um, uh, to me, photography is very personal mm -hmm. so uh, working on my photography always means to work on my per very personal life mm -hmm. and uh, this is my approach to this i want to become a better person and i think then i will be a better photographer mm -hmm. afterwards and um, i'm really uh, looking for um um, inspiration in uh, not in uh, photography or not in wedding photography but in uh, a different kind of arts for example mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, to get out of this bubble which uh, Patrick just mentioned because um, uh, I think one year ago um, I uh, really saw a lot of wedding pictures on Facebook, on Instagram, only weddings, weddings, weddings. And I recognized that it uh, um, became kind of boring to me and that it, um, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, it really stressed me because I saw um, other photographers working in a completely different way. And uh, I felt that I would lose my own way when I was uh, looking at these pictures all the time. And uh, now I'm, I'm looking for other inspirations mm -hmm. like art paintings mm -hmm. and yeah, museums, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Yeah. And I think uh, I think everybody wants to be a better person. So how do you do that? <laughs> if you can figure that out <laughs> and, teach, and teach us all how to be better people, that would be great. <laughs> I think I, I think I our, every day. <laughs> I, I think our son is a is a good. Um, he he makes us a better person. For instance, because um, he is he's eleven years old and he reflects us and he says, "Hey, Dad. Hey, Mom." This is totally wrong, and what 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 were they telling me? So this is um, sort of a reflection, or um, sometimes good friends are a good reflection, um, but they don't have to be um, photographers, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. because um, they they have a look at your photos and they say, okay, oh, it's boring for me. They don't see any differences, uh, or or they see differences, or they say, wow, this is really cool, this is not the, the um, traditional stuff, this is um, totally different, whatever. Uh, this helps, for instance, as, as Rosa said, yeah, we, we go to museums or read books, and but not just books about photography or art. Um, I love to, to read um, novels, for instance, but um, to, to read stories, or to we, we, lo we love movies, we love watching movies. Mm -hmm. Um, this is this is good for both for for stories for storytelling maybe and for framing, light composition whatever. Um, I mean we, we don't watch a movie and, and say oh this is cool that we can do this in our weddings too or whatever. Uh, that <laughs> wouldn't make any sense. But um, yeah, it's um, I think sometimes we we see a difference between a movie uh, which has a good story but which has a let's say um, average framing or whatever. Um, it's like, like reading a book. I, I studied English literature and, um, when I read a book, normally I, I read a book with this, with these glasses. So I just see all this stuff I learned at university and sometimes it's really boring. So, um, for me, because I can't read a book, uh, like normal people do it, reading a book, like, you know, just, um, just read a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, think, I think the uh, the whole idea of looking into other uh, things that interest you, other interests um, that can that can influence you in, in subtle ways. Like even though you're watching a movie and you're not analyzing the cinematography, it can still have an effect on you. 
or if you yeah. go to a museum and you see some wonderful uh, pictures, you know, you, you're, you're not necessarily analyzing it as a wedding photographer. No. Um, or, or picking it apart technically. But, uh, but I, I'm the same way. I've, I'm a great lover of, of art museums and go to anyone that I ever go to any city. It's always the art museum is one of the first stops. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it does affect you. It does, it does influence you. And it does affect your, I don't know, your, your artistic sensibilities. Um, just being in that world and then bring it back to wedding photography. Because you're right, you, you can get in the bubble. I mean, I look at probably 100,000 wedding photo photographs a year, right? So it's like, <laughs> I, I yeah, need to get away from it in a while. Yeah. 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 We totally get that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, well, even when you, when you read a book or look, browse through a book, it's like, um, you just see the photos and you, you don't have to read this book. You don't have to watch every photo, every single photo. You just let it, it sink in and, yeah, it, it works somehow. I yeah. think it's um, it's um, a strong influence, actually. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, speaking of wedding photos, <laughs> we have a couple of photos we're going to look at from you. Uh, okay. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to put them up on Facebook. I don't know if you, you're also watching the Facebook feed as well, but I, if you can't see it, I can describe it for you. What we're going to be looking at. Um, so let me get it up here. Okay, so oh, this yeah. is the uh, this is the black and white. It looks like the bride and the mother uh, embracing. I don't see it on Facebook. You don't see it yet. Well, let's see. No, I just see us. But not the photo. Still see us. Hmm. Okay. I, I see. I see the live stream. Um, uh, I saw it. Yeah. No, I see it. You see it. Mm -hmm. I see it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Rosa can see <laughs> it. <laughs> so I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, I yeah. Now I got it. I, okay. Mm -hmm. I have a delay there. Sorry about that. Um, so I think this is a this is a, a great example, of, obviously, of, of a real moment. So talk to me about about this photo. Okay, it's your photo, yeah. Rosa. <laughs> that's my photo. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a moment after the speech. Uh, the um, bride had a speech, and um, afterwards she was um, yeah. She met her mother and. Uh, they hugged and it was a really close moment. Um, both cried. You, I think you can't see it in the picture, but both cried. And that this is the kind of moment which are really important to me on a wedding day because they are both so very close uh, in this picture. And uh, you could, I think you can really feel uh, the emotion between both of them and uh, on this red wedding, it was um, um, even a bit of difficult family situation because the parents of the bride were divorced and uh, um, uh, I kind of felt the tension between the father and the mother of the bride the whole day and um, I felt the uh, release when the mother finally um, hugged her daughter like this and um, it was... I felt it was a really big and strong moment on this wedding day. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those peak uh, peak moments of the emotion and, and the hug. But but even from a photography standpoint, the tones are lovely. I mean, the graphical nature and how they much they stand out from the dark background. Um, it's, it's really a strong photo. Thank you. Can you do you ever uh, compete as a as a couple? <laughs> to see how many of your how many of your, your, your photos ends up in the final album. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. Yes. How do you choose? Yes. <laughs> yes, do. Yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah. How do we choose? Um, we 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 did we we try to approach this question um, from different <laughs> in different ways, but actually, um, I. I, I choose the photos we um, we bring home from a wedding, and um, I at the moment at least at the moment I edit the photos. But then 
Um, Rosa, um, she has a look um, at the photos as well and um, makes other decisions, of course, because I, I'm not very strong in um, picking photos. Just when we come home with uh, seven or 8,000 photos uh, or frames, it's like um, Rosa has to look over it and, and I have to look over it. And then we make decisions uh, concerning what, what we can give the couple on what is for the slideshow and what goes for contests and whatever. So these decisions actually we, we make together, mm. but uh, for the workflow, um, just one calls the photos and edits the photos because um, we, we, we tried everything, but um, the workflow is, uh, is gone then. And, and that's make one thing, fun. I'm going to backtrack a bit because we did want to talk about that, about how you do work together as a couple and what the dynamic there is. So that's one thing. So one person calls and, and edits, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it always the same person or do you go back and forth? Back and forth. Okay. Sometimes Patrick's, uh, it's Patrick's work and sometimes mine. But, but it is that we still discuss a lot about our pictures and which pictures are good and which pictures has to be in and which pictures has to be out and uh, it's still a pose, process in the journey <laughs> somehow. Yeah, and that, that is where the d dynamic starts <laughs> between us. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like, um, yes, uh, it, it's better now, I would yeah. say. It's, it's, much, it's much better now, but two years ago it was like, um, um, to be honestly, I, it was a mess. It was, uh, I, sometimes it was, a, it was a disaster <laughs> between us. Um, I mean, it, it started on the wedding day, um, because, um, on every single wedding, I, I feel like it is my first wedding. And, um, then we had this kind of dynamics because, um, Rosa focused on different things and I focused on whatever. Um, and, yeah, it it was it was a real, real, real big challenge for us um, to come together to communicate mm. properly and um, to have the same focus. I mean, we we see different things, and that is what we tell our clients that we have a female and a male mm -hmm. point of view. And um, yeah, but but it was a real challenge. The first two years were they were like <laughs> like hell. Yeah, too, as we say, you had to work yeah. out the kinks. You had to iron out all the wrinkles and figure out how to make it work. Yeah. So, so yeah. let's walk through a couple of scenarios. And so when, when clients uh, contact you and want to talk to you, I'm assuming you both sit down with the clients to, for that initial meeting. Yeah. 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 Of okay. course, yeah. The meeting. Yeah. Okay. Before on the phone, the phone uh, is Patrick's part because he's much better on the phone <laughs> than I am. And, uh, but when we meet the couple, we uh, do it together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. So the wedding day comes along and you show up for the preparations, the getting ready or whatever. Uh, how do mm. you split that up? Is it always done the same way or do you play it differently each time? Yeah. No, We're changing. It's sometimes flexible. Patrick is with the bride. Sometimes uh, me, um, we are very flexible with that because I think it depends uh, on the bride as well. Some brides uh, prefer a woman around them. Mm -hmm. Some say it's okay if a male photographer is with them. So we are very flexible with okay. that. Okay. So yeah. I guess you go with the situation, whatever feels comfortable at the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So ceremony comes along. Do you have like a routine of, do, do you have like, headsets where you're talking to each other from different parts of the church or do you have hand, you know, hand signals you mean like, or... <laughs> like CIA agents exactly. or FBI yeah yeah, yeah. Thing in the ear, yeah. yeah. Actually, actually I have to say um, uh, we, we talked about this and I tried this just a single time um, with another um, photographer with Rossio Vega on a wedding in France and uh, it didn't work <laughs> so it was it was a mess. It, it just just didn't work, and um, I came home and and um, told Rosa. So we we don't have to buy a headset. Doesn't work. We have to um, to communicate in mm -hmm. advance. So before before the reception, before the ceremony, we have to talk. And I think we have um, we have an approach to do this. I think now we know that um, where, where where everybody is and who takes the photos of whatever and who um, has a focus on the reaction of, of the people, um, I think this is pretty much clear now. 
So we're sort yeah. of planning in advance. These are the types of photos you get. These are the types that I'll get. And kind of yeah, get yeah. We, okay. we plan in advance, but I think that's uh, also the good thing about uh, doing it as a couple. Uh, we know each other so very well that uh, if Patrick gives me kind of a wink or a sign, I I immediately know what he means. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. I think that's what's better about uh, doing it as a couple uh, than, for example, with a second shooter. Mm -hmm. You know, only for um, one day yeah. or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can kind of anticipate each other's moves and finish each yeah. other's sentences because you know each other so well. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. So yeah. what about so out ceremony is done and we're going to do the formal photos? You know, bride and groom portraits, family portraits, that kind of a thing. How does how does that work with the two of you? How do you split, uh, how do you split I, that up? Um, it's um, now now we have um, we have a solution for all the problems we had in in the past. I think <laughs> because um, as you mentioned that before, Joe, um, that that we had some sort of a contest and we had a contest even on the wedding day. And uh, for us, that that also uh, was part of this challenge. And um, but that was not good. To, um, that wasn't good for our photos or for working together. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to, we, we tried different things like um, Rosa did the couple shooting or I did it or we both did it. That was the worst stuff. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But Rosa agrees. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, because, really, it's at the same time, both of us, that was really hard, yeah. <laughs> didn't work well. at all. <laughs> because I, ha I had an idea and Rosa was like, yeah, you are done. You can go in. And it was, a, hey, stop. <laughs> yeah. And so it was, that was really difficult. And uh, we decided that just one does the couple shooting. Um, at the moment, it's, it's me. Um, but that's not, um, it's not to, that, that I think Rosa is not able to do this. It's just a decision, and it's it's flexible. We can change it um, from wedding to wedding. It depends how we feel, I think. Okay. Yeah. And, and do you ever and shoot weddings together. individually, or do you do you always shoot um, together as a couple? Rosa. Most of the time, we are doing it together. Okay. Patrick was shooting uh, as a second shooter last year several times, and I was shooting as a se second shooter as well yeah. one time. And uh, the years before, we did it separately as well. And um, but but it's so so very comfortable and great to do it together mm -hmm. because um, we get uh, so much more moments and um, every one of us can uh, kind of relax more and gets uh, gets the chance to do more like experimental photos as well. Um, because you always can tell the other person to do the safe shots mm -hmm. and because you want to try something new or um, make make something different. And that's really great. And we love to do it together. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad we covered that. I was curious to see how you work together. Okay. <laughs> so I have, the, uh, I have the picture of the, the two kids on top of the air grate with the oh, yeah. wind blowing up. I, I see this uh, as a lot of your photos too. You guys love shooting the uh, the, the kids at the weddings because they're always so great to shoot as the kids because they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, they're just having fun. <laughs> they're just happy. They just they just uh, do their whatever what what they want to do, exactly. and it's like um yeah it's um it's always um yeah it's a pleasure for us and even our son. I mean he's eleven now and he. Um, feel sort of uh, um, uncomfortable when we come with a camera, but uh, the years before he he didn't recognize, he didn't even he wasn't aware of this, and I think this is um, what what mostly um, kids feel like they are not aware of a camera and they don't feel being judged or something. They just are kids and do whatever they want to do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. This is a great, uh, both both a great kid shot and a great moment shot and a great thanks. and a great expression <laughs> shot. So many things and the colors and everything. It all it all just works. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Oh, I love this one. This is the uh, the close up of the of the 
bride and her wedding party. Oh. <laughs> Do you see that, Rosa? Not, Not yet. yet. Maybe it takes a minute for it to load. Oh. But it's the, uh, the close-up of, of the bride's dress and all the pink, uh, mm -hmm. pink dresses ah. around her. I see. It. Yeah. And the, the, the touching of the hands. So, so how was this photo made? Tell, tell us a story about, about this photo. We did uh, a <laughs> shooting with the wedding party and uh, had the girls to do different things. And uh, it was right at the end that I just told them, them to get close and uh, touch. And this is what they what they did um, all by themselves. And I think their hands are so very beautiful because there's some kind of power, uh, like of, um, going from one hand to the other and ending in the bride's hand. And that's what I love about the photo. It's the colors, of course, but for me, it's the hands even more. Yeah, yeah. I really much love it. Yeah, I agree. Especially the, with the, knowing the fact that it wasn't it wasn't uh, posed in detail by the photographer. It's a very natural because uh, if you were to go in there and pose, then maybe their hands would all look exactly the same. Or mm -hmm. this is just like just like it's a human touch. That's, that's what's mm -hmm. so special. Yeah, yeah. And the colors are uh, amazing. <laughs> the yeah, colors the here. colors are. Too. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. My first thought was um, when when Rosa did these photos um, that yeah they they look boring. Um, I have to say this because um, when when you say uh, when you see the raw photos, uh, you see um, well, forests in the background and trees and and all this stuff. And uh, I I didn't know I didn't expect that this photo would be um, so concentrated, so so much focused on the hands and on the, on the colors. I, I really love this photo. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess from a technical standpoint, what did you did you frame it like this when you shot it or did you shoot it wide and then crop it? It was wider. It was, it was wider, wider and, and I cropped it. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. that's great cropping. That is uh, the sign of an artist to take uh, to take both. I mean, the, the wider shot would be the safe shot, right? Would be yeah. right. Do you want to see mm -hmm. faces? Right. But uh, creative cropping can be so powerful to direct your eye where you want it to go. And, and it's a real mm -hmm. skill that some photographers have that they're able to do uh, very effective cropping uh, because, you know, the, the file sizes now and the resolution of the photos are so amazing these days. You can crop in and still get incredible photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's yeah. true. But again, yeah. it's, it's not but, being lazy. It's taking the time and the effort to look for it and to create it and to play with it. That all takes time. Yeah, I yeah. think that sometimes it's not. I think it's more about the cropping uh, because um, it takes more time to to crop all these photos afterwards um, than to 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 care about whatever ISO skin tones or whatever. Because um, you know we we have um, two or three presets which we create for our own for our own, and um, we spend a lot of time for cropping because um, what what we learned is that that cropping that um, caring about edges, caring about composition um, is what di makes the difference, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have the sense that the couple doesn't see that, but I, I'm pretty sure that they see this, but they are not aware of this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you ever have any, any issues, or you've probably worked it out by now, in, in terms of like uh, matching uh, the files from the two of you, like color-wise or... Um, are, you, are you using the exact same uh, camera? No, no. that's uh, that's a problem. Oh. oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, actually, um, Rosa started with a Canon 6D, and uh, she she still uses it. She um, she loves the camera. <laughs> hey, oh. It's a great camera, but um, it doesn't have a dual slot or whatever. And uh, I have two 5Ds, and our first idea was um, that everybody should have two cameras at least. So um, we bought a fourth camera, a Sony A7 Mark III, and um, guess I I use three cameras now. Rosa still uses her 6D, so um, <laughs> it's sort of weird. Hey, it's it not works. because of me. It works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, sometimes we, we have, um, of course – difficulties with um with different raws with different mm -hmm. colors and stuff like this and to make this um 
equal or looking the same. Um, it's yeah. Sometimes it takes time. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. here's a simple solution: black and white. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always works. <laughs> Always works. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, we had black and white fixes everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but <laughs> sometimes we um we we got questions in the past like um how many photos are black and white from from our couples our customers and uh, we were like um it depends so uh, I c I couldn't say that <laughs> I um it depends on on the situation the light on on the party on on the party light and on our um let's say um taste personal personal intention whatever um now we don't have these questions anymore i don't know why but uh in the first years um uh, we had these questions a lot how many photos are black and white do we all do we get all photos in black and white and in color stuff like this and um i really i really much love real black and white not these um like you know, one click <laughs> one click black and white yeah like like <laughs> Hey, yeah. gray and white or whatever i really much love mm -hmm. um, black and white so it's it's um yeah i don't know what to what to explain our customers but yeah you are right black and white would work we should do that well i'm so old that i, I had shot weddings in the old days only using black and white film so there was no color choice <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> so here's I'm speaking of black and white so here's a here's another wonderful kid photo uh, the child looking up into the hands. It's probably a, a parent, I'm assuming. But, uh, yeah. you know, you have so many things going yeah. on here. Mm -hmm. It's the grandfather's hand, wow. in, in fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was right after the ceremony, and I think it's a great moment because it. this photo shows uh, to me what grandparents or parents are all about the the child looking up and waiting and the hands are opening for the child and that's kind of um i don't know how to explain mm -hmm. it it's like a symbol even for me uh, for what is between parents grandparents and children opened hands mm -hmm. and children yeah. who come yeah and it's beautiful Thank because you. you're, you're talking about, you know, the human connection. You're not, you don't necessarily look, you look past the photography, right? And you're looking at the human connection. And that's what, that's what this photo says. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, you can look at it because it's obviously a gorgeous photo and the, the lighting and everything, but uh, it's the human interaction and the human connection that, that speaks to your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And, and again, as a photographer, I'm thinking, I always think when I see a really good photo or in, in one of the contests, I say, okay, if I was there, would I have got that shot? You know, because this takes thinking. This takes, oh, I see a child and the grandfather. I'll take a p picture of both of them, which is a very different photo than this, right? Yeah, I think sometimes um, I have the sense that um, you, you have to be um, on the right place at the right time. Of course, uh, but you also have to see the frame. You also have to see this re really little moment, um, which is maybe just a second or, or shorter. And um, yeah, I think this um, makes the difference. I mean, we we normally take a lot of photos, um, a lot of frames uh, from one scene, but um, then we decide which which works. And sometimes nothing works. And uh, here it, it works works out very well. I really. We let out this photo. Yeah. And I always say, you know, people say, oh, it was it was a lucky shot because you shoot so much and you were able to pick it out of a, you know, a series of 30 shots that were there. And I thought, well, yeah, in, in a way it's lucky, but in a way it's not because you were still there looking for it and still getting what you needed to do to be able to frame it or crop it to what you needed. So it's like, you know, fortune favors the brave kind of a thing that it's, it. Yeah. It, uh, you, Anyway, yeah. yeah. So sometimes I think it's it's like a um, you you don't have to move all the time on a wedding. Uh, sometimes you just can sit on on the ground or on the floor or whatever, and just uh, observe the situation. And something will happen then. So it's, mm -hmm. this is not necessary for us to move yeah. all the time around. So. Well, that's the great thing about weddings. Usually, if you wait around long enough, if you're in a wedding situation, something interesting will happen because there's yeah. a lot of people interacting in a lot of different ways. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I love this, That's this photo too, from, look, obviously from the ceremony. Uh, I am. But because of the framing um, and the separation and the focus and the toning on the, on the bride and groom. Um, so I, I, I love where my eye goes because there's so much depth here. There's foreground, there's middle ground, there's background. There's a look at all the eyes looking at the musicians. So who took this photo? Um, that was my photo. Mm -hmm. um, that was a wedding um, last year. Um, yeah, it was. Um, you, you see the girls, the women uh, on the on the right side. Mm -hmm. These were the girls. Um, we weren't these the girls um, where you took the photo from with the with the hands. Rosa? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It yeah were exactly the same the mm -hmm. same wedding. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, what what I really loved was uh, the interaction between the singer on the left side and the bride because um, they are good f good friends right. and um, she did it for for the couple uh, just n not for for money or something they just did it for the couple and um, um, some some people um, started to cry when when she started to sing and it was for me it was um, it, it really touched me this moment really touched me and I just wanted to to keep all this um the singer the couple the people the re their reaction and um yeah some sort of a little story in this in this photo um i was sitting there for like 10 15 minutes waiting for a situation like this and um yeah um maybe 2 years ago or 3 years ago uh i would have been going around through the church and uh looking for other spots or situations and there I was just waiting for for the situation yeah yeah well I, well knowing that backstory too about about the connection between the singer and the bride that makes this photo probably even more special to the bride right yeah you, I would say yeah and, yeah, and again I, from a photography standpoint you can say well someone who was leaping maybe a little bit more lazy and wasn't thinking would say oh I need to make sure I come around to the right and do a really wide shot so I can get the singers and the people, everything in focus, right? That's a very, just a very safe environmental type shot. But it takes a lot of forethought and thinking about framing and composition to say, to, to create it like this. So that's why I like this one. Thank you. You know what I mean? It's always that extra, it's that extra step, yeah. it's that extra thinking, it's that extra effort to say, how can I make this more interesting more uh, from a composition standpoint or an emotional standpoint? And that takes um, intention and it takes deliberate thinking and execution, right? That's what separates the professional yeah. from, from the non, Yeah, in my opinion. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's exactly what we think. There's a lot of great photographers think. out there, but, but are you willing to make those extra steps, like make, put in that extra effort to create a, a more interesting photo? Yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I think I, we we think uh, the same, but um, I think um, we we don't want to waste time to to see um, to to judge even um, other photographers. Um, we we would like to just focus on what we do and to make this very good and um, to to make um, our photos to, to have an, to have an impact in our photos. And we that sounds maybe a bit strange but we don't care that much about um who else does wedding photography and um to compete with them and, and i mean we do we we attend contests of course but um we don't want to to compete on on um in real life uh, i think this is just waste of time it's uh, it doesn't give you any um yeah. efforts or whatever yeah only only in so far that it motivates you to shoot better for yourself yeah yeah Exactly. Yeah. So this is a really interesting photo, and I think it points to your your tendency to have very graphically strong images um, with the bride and yeah. groom. I guess that's some sort of stairway. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It is. Yeah. It was. It's so funny because that was a wedding last Monday. Um, actually, our first wedding this year, and um, yeah, maybe be, <laughs> maybe because uh, we we. Um, we had some impressions um, of the last week um, with uh, with Rich. Hey, Rich, he's, <laughs> he's listening. <laughs> hey, Rich. Yeah, and uh, he's a. Uh, I mean, um, I am. It was always it was always 
uncomfortable for me to do the couple shoots. Um, I'm very honest about this because um, I was like, oh, come on, uh, I don't have any ideas and uh, what, what can I do and, and stuff like this. And then I, um, I asked Rosa and she did her best. And then I came back and I, I just have some ideas. I have some ideas. Let me, let me do this. So, and that was challenge first, the first challenge. And then um, I think we both made a decision. We said, okay, couple shoots are um, important for the couples, for the clients. Mm -hmm. And we also like graphics and graphic novels and, and stuff like this. And we, we love those kind of photos, actually. It's not a moment, but it's, it's um, you know, um, um, if, it's not, if it's not my photo, I would say I, I can... Um, put it on the wall or on the background of my, my computer or whatever. Uh, I love the graphic elements in there and, and the um, reduction of the colors and stuff like this. And mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like you're it's shooting from a low angle. Was that, was that really an all blue sky or did you have to clone anything out of that? Just a bit on the right side and on the left side, there was sort of a fence, uh, which was sort of distracting. But uh, the rest, I, I was on my knees, actually, and um, I, I shot this, this photo or this frame right from my knees to, to the sky because uh, it was some sort of construction, which is uh, in, the, um, in North Rhine-Westphalia, where we live. Um, there is some, uh, or was, some coal mining, and they have all these uh, constructions there, and it's, it's very interesting. It's very graphical. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not everybody that can, can look at that. You know, imagine there were no, no people in that photo. Someone should glance over there, see that, and then envision, oh, here's what I can do with that to make an interesting photo. That's an additional step. Yeah, may, maybe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I have to, I and, have you know, to sometimes confess. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, to be honest with you. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a try. But um, yeah, um, actually, that's what it is. It's a um, couple, couple time, couple shooting um, for us um, was was not a good time i think it was also struggling with uh, light ideas composition and whatever and now i feel that much better about couple shootings <laughs> so <laughs> and this one had to work out because there were really steep stairs up there yes. i don't yeah. know how long they were and we had a bride and a bridesmaid on on high heels oh. walking up there so the photo had to be uh, really good <laughs> in the end. <laughs> yeah. So here's, the here's another nice uh, emotional moment. Uh, oh, yeah. Is this like a first look? Is that uh, what this is? Yeah. No, it's a uh, reception. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it was a reception. And uh, I don't know what the relation was between them. That is a bride. And I, I think it's uh, maybe it's a, a relative or family mm -hmm. member. I don't know. Um, but he he started to to cry and um, um, actually I I don't like receptions because um, there are so many people around me and I don't know how to focus on whatever and so many things are happening at the same time mm -hmm. and um, but that was that was luck um, because um, I was standing there and um, he started to cry and he was really touched by this moment and um, yeah I, I was at the right time right yeah. position you know so and they're, it's always great when they can be emotional like that and you're so close to them but they don't care whether you're there or not they're they're in the yeah. moment they're interacting uh, between themselves you're just you know the, the proverbial fly on the wall and, and they don't they don't uh, care or notice that you're there because they're they're interacting it's great actually yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah and therefore, I think we love these moments. We love um, not to be seen. We love to be un invisible. We love to be, um, yeah, we, we love when, when our clients after the wedding give us the feedback that uh, they didn't recognize that we were there. Yeah. So this is a good feedback for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, and you, you don't see that. I'm, I'm pretty tall and uh, I normally... Um, yeah, you know, I'm taller than the other people. It's hard for me to be invisible, but uh, sometimes it works, yeah. It works. So this looks like a, a getting ready photo with the, in a reflection, I'm guessing. Yes, uh, that was last year as well, I think. Um, it was a getting ready. I was at the balcony. And what you see is a, um, it's uh, the town hall of our hometown of Aachen. 
I think some people will recognize this now <laughs> after the conference. And uh, yeah, that was a getting ready, and it um, actually it was a mess inside. The, ro the whole room was a mess, and um, I decided to 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 go outside and to um, somehow put that reflection into my my frame. Um, to be honest, I I saw the town hall, but I didn't know that it um, that it worked. Mm. Um, when, I, when I took the photo, I, I, I saw it um, when I was editing the photo. Then I saw okay that that works, and um, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're outside the building, and look, at, and that's the, the reflection of the window, and I guess yeah. that's a bride or a bridesmaid or someone. Yeah. Which, yeah, and they didn't know you were there. They came over to the window and were putting on lipstick, and you saw them there. Or did was there any sort of acknowledgement that that she knew that you were there? Um, I think they they yeah they were aware of of us of, of not two just some of, strange of person outside the building taking photos. No, of women, <laughs> women getting dressed inside. <laughs> no, we 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 did some crazy stuff before, like. Um, on whatever on the bed or whatever but uh, they they didn't recognize us um they were just like um in this moment in the situation and uh i was just outside and, and watching to the inside yeah. so it was the, actually the, the, the colors and the lighting composition wise it all it all just works it's just like it's almost like she's a painting it's just like uh, uh, it's gorgeous. yeah thank you and like i said you know the the fact that the the building was there luck or well maybe a little bit of luck but you're also able to use it um i have different frames of this uh, moment like 15 or 13 mm -hmm. or something like this and um yeah this this works um the other ones were like um not in the right position so she looks like a little devil or whatever um with this town hall on her head oh. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah. Here's another uh, emotional black and white. Again, I see a yeah. I see a theme here, you guys. You love uh, you love the emotional <laughs> moments. It's, yeah, that's a great thing about true. weddings. Is there's typically a lot of them, so, but it's, it still takes skill to capture them, frame them, compose them, you know, edit mm -hmm. them. Thanks. Yeah, it's Rosas. Yeah, that's mine, yeah. and that's what I really love most about weddings: the really, really strong emotions and. I'm always really happy when we come home and I was able to capture them for the couple. Mm -hmm. And this, I took this photo really late at night. It was uh, shortly before we left the wedding and it was one of the bridesmaids and she was a really close friend to the bride and, um, they were standing there by themselves uh, talking and, all of a sudden she hugged her like this and as you can see the the hand of the bride was really like strong like grabbing her mm -hmm. holding her and uh, for a few minutes even and a really strong moment as i think yeah. and really really happy i can see such things and capture them um we spent some extra time there. I think we uh, we stayed until uh, the party ended. Um, we were just booked for ten or twelve hours, but then uh, we um, we were there for like sixteen or seventeen hours wow. <laughs> because the party was pretty good and um, Great party. We, yeah, we we love parties <laughs> at the wedding and um, yeah. And, uh, then this moment um, just popped up. Uh, I didn't see this moment. I was somewhere else, and yeah. uh, but I love this. Is uh, is ten or, or twelve hours your typical coverage that you normally do? Yeah, I would say yeah. yeah. I think um, it's 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 pretty normal. It's uh, in in Germany. It's sometimes it's eight hours, but ten hours on average, I think, and um, sometimes twelve or fourteen hours. But that's rare, I think. Mm -hmm. I, this is rare in Germany, okay. for us at least. Mm -hmm. Here's a here's a great photo too. Of the of, I wonder if this is the same uh, bridal party as we saw before. Yeah, it is. It's the same party. Yeah, those yeah. Those, uh, mm -hmm. those colors just all work, don't they? Yeah, that was a gift. Uh, those colors. <laughs> those. <laughs> it was like yeah, you know, it's um. That was at the uh, venue at the um, location when when we arrived or after we arrived there. And um, for me, it was like they just went into uh, the house. Um, and yeah, it's um, 
it's from for me it looks like 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 an like a scene from from uh, Alice in, in Wonderland or so exactly. because uh, the 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 colors is, is, yeah, is, it's yeah it's a, like it's, on, it's surreal almost it, yeah it, it was such yeah. a beautiful scene there it's um yeah I, it was a gift yeah, yeah. And, and one might say oh it looks like you you posed them or gave them a lot of instructions on how to no. walk down the path but if, if this was caught like just as a spontaneous moment that's what makes it amazing yeah yeah it's totally spontaneous and it just i mean i think they were aware of my camera but uh um they they didn't do any fancy stuff or whatever they just walked and they had fun and and um, yeah maybe they did it because of my camera i don't know but i didn't um i, I didn't say hey pay attention to me i just want to take a photo or whatever because i think that would have destroyed the moment yeah well it, it looks natural because because it is natural if you had tried to pose that it would look it wouldn't look anywhere near no good. yeah wouldn't have worked yeah <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked <laughs> no no yeah yeah it's a gift yeah it's, it's a gift <laughs> the right. cup, so yeah this is a lovely um close-up with the the sunset behind the grasses there Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw this photo. I, 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 speaking of movies, uh, I love that scene yeah. from, from Gladiator. When, Gladiator, yeah. <laughs> when he's walking yeah. along and brushing the tops of the grasses like that. But yeah, I uh, yes. Um, this is um, I I hadn't in mind. I hadn't this scene in mind. I just was like, okay, this it looks nice to to see through the, her shirt or to see uh, that it is some sort of transparent and it's so color reduced. And mm -hmm. um, so after I, I showed this photo um, to, to some um, other friends, I, they, I realized that this could have, could have been inspired by the movie Gladiator. Uh, that, um, that was not in my mind intentionally when I took mm -hmm. this photo. But yeah, it's, it's like the scene when he walks through uh, the field and uh, it's, for, for me, it's, I mean, it's actually it's just a detail, but um, I somehow I'm I'm connected with that detail because I I love these two people. Um, actually, they are these are friends. They're friends, and um, uh, I love to the memory of this day. I love to remember um, that day because it was very special for me. I was there alone and uh, without Rosa, and uh, it was a very special day for me. I have to say. Yeah. It's a great moment. I mean, mm -hmm. sh shooting at sunset always has such great warm light, and to, to backlight the grasses like that, you know, it's yeah. yeah, not not a lot of photographers could pull this off. Shooting into the sun, getting that right backlighting and everything. Uh, of course, a safer mm -hmm. shot would be to go around the front, right, to get the light on her mm -hmm. face. But uh, this was far more interesting. Yeah. Thanks. It was a Thanks. Was that like during a, a portrait session where you were walking around outside during. Uh, uh, getting some portraits taken, or yeah, we were just walking around, and uh, they were like, uh, they are very much outdoor people, and they love to to shoot outside, and they had uh, several proposals um, for for a scene or some areas, and um, we just were just walking around and had a good time, and uh, took some photos there, and um, yeah, sometimes I had the sense that they were not aware of the camera as well. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, it's um, they were just them. Yeah, and I think this photo. What I love about this photo is that it, it is all about feelings. Because you can feel the sun, you can feel the grass. Yeah. It's it's like summer on your skin, the sun on your skin, yeah. and well, it's, it's all a, about it's, feelings. It is like a scene from a movie. It just gives you that warm mm -hmm. feeling. That, yeah. 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 But the next one, the next one is very different than that last one. This is the. The cake coming, <laughs> the cake feeding shot. <laughs> his expression, of course, is priceless. It's a great expression. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them do. Yeah. But again, this this, this this shows again your guys' great sense of uh, of the graphic uh, construction of the uh, how, much, how well they stand up from the background. I'm assuming there's a little bit of uh, uh, Photoshop darkening around there, but it works, you know. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, of course, because uh, some distracting sure. details in the background. Sure. Um, and how do you, but, how do you light your your interior photos like this? What are you using for your lighting? Uh, that was um, off camera flashlight. I think I used uh, this um, Magmod 
you know, um, or people call it tit. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you know this this um, which makes um, the diffuser. I, I, it's a bulb. Uh, yeah, so it's um, yeah, it was like um, standing camera and holding the flash on this side and like this. I, I did that without Rosa's help in this um, on this photo. Normally, um, when, when we shoot uh, with flashes, um, we have some flashes on a tripod, and okay. like two flashes on a tripod, mm -hmm. and we move around. And Rosa has a flash, and I have a camera, and normally an additional flash. But this mm -hmm. one was like, um, it's, it's just, I think it was just one flash uh, of camera flash with this MacMod stuff. I think so too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like different people do it different ways. Of course, with reception lighting, it's uh... yeah, it's, it's it's sometimes it's like um, you you don't know what what's what's coming out, what's uh, the result when you use um, too many flashes, I think, yeah. and all the uh, whatever stuff, fancy stuff, and and things like this. I mean, this is um, just a moment, and yes, there could have been some more flashes, some whatever, and and blue light in the background, but. You know, it's it's a black and white, and um, I I really much love this moment because actually that is one point um, between Rosa and me because she she likes it, but uh, mm. she she told me not to show it, and I was like, why? Because it's it's a, it's a great moment for me. It was a great moment yeah. um, because of his face, and she said, okay, but. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't like it. He doesn't like to see it on Facebook there's or Rosa Instagram. Being, or... There's Rosa being empathetic again. Yeah. <laughs> a bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the client, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's sort of a dynamic which yeah. we... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, depending on the, on the client, he, I mean, I can see how some clients might say, oh, that's not my greatest facial expression, but other clients would love it, right? It all depends on the person. Mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's depends. True. Yeah. This next photo of these looks like the groom and two of the groomsmen... Uh, again, peak moment of expression. It's, it's, mm. People don't realize it's it's not always easy to get everyone in the photo with a good expression. Usually there's someone who doesn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> and they, this um, this was a wedding last year in Munich. Um, I was actually I was second shooting for Rossio, and um, uh, they these guys the, in the middle it's it's the groom and uh, the other guys are his friends his very best friends uh, the left guy is from um, from Australia and the right the guy on the right side is from Canada and they just came for this wedding it's an Indian wedding and um, he uh, shaved his beard because one day before he had a beard like me wow. <laughs> and um, yeah he shaved it for the second day because on the second day was a uh, sort of the German ceremony, and uh, they were waiting for for departure um, to the um, to the location or the venue, um, which was pretty close to Munich. And they just had fun. These guys were so funny. They just just sitting there and having fun and laughing, and that was not staged. And I didn't tell them, "Hey guys, now laugh, just talk to each other." Just were sitting there. They know that I was there. But um, they didn't recognize me, or uh, they, I didn't distract them anymore. No, you can definitely so, tell it's a very genuine uh, emotion there, very genuine expression. Yeah, but it again, is. But it's again, look at look at the composition, look at the colors, though. You know, it's fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. It, it was also a gift because uh, the room had um, natural light from both sides, so I didn't need a flash. And um, yeah, the colors were like. Um, they they all match together and um, yeah. some sort of graphical with, with the lines on the side and yeah, it was also a gift for me. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking too. Just just the small detail of having the red ties and the red uh, you know handkerchief. I mean, if those were yeah. black, if all the ties were black, would be it'd still be a great photo. But you know, the colors just make it just make it pop, right? It's like a, yeah, yeah, a gift. <laughs> yeah. A gift. We got, uh, we got one more photo we'll look at and we'll wrap up. Oh, another another strong emotional shot. I love this this photo. Who took this one? Well, I can't see it. Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, wait, take a second. Should have reduced the file sizes, I guess. Make, it, make them load a little bit faster. <laughs> this is the the shot from the back of the looks like the father of the of the bride. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's this, Patrick's. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was. Was this, um, was this in the church? I can't tell. No, it's outside. It's okay. outside. It was uh, actually it was a reception, and that this 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 moment really touched me because um, this is the bride and her father, and he, uh, she's um, his only daughter. And uh, I met them thirty minutes before um, for when they met. He's actually from Bavaria, and she lives in in Düsseldorf. And um, yeah, when when they met. He was very, he was very emotional. And, um, although he, he seemed to be like a very tough guy and, and whatever. But then he started to cry and I heard what he said to his daughter, um, that, um, he, he, he said, um, take care, take care of my daughter. She's my only one. Mm. And, um, he, he started to cry then. And, um, I really That's much right. loved this moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says, that that really touched me, and um, it was also a gift to to stand there because, uh, as I said, um, receptions normally are a bit um, stressful for me. But um, that that was a gift to stand there, and I know I knew that well, this was his, her father, mm. and uh, it was worth to to wait there for for his um, appearance. I think. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a beautiful moment, and the lighting is is gorgeous too. Thank you. Thanks. What, what, what was the lighting? I'm sorry. Don't, don't want to get too technical because it's such an emotional shot. Just curious what the lighting situation was. Looks Is it just all ambient available light? Yeah, it is. It's available light, but mm -hmm. the, actually the, the light, lightning was um, really crap, I have to say, mm -hmm. because we had so many um, stuff like, like, like little shadows from leaves of the trees and, and stuff like this. And fortunately, they were not standing under the trees, just right at the side of the trees and um yeah and there was so much distracting stuff on the background um so we had to to um to dark it a bit and uh to yeah to to focus on just this scene it was actually it was very much cropped because uh, uh on the original one uh there was pretty much um of the church which you could see sure. so um cropping that was the solution to to uh, just focus on the scene here and um, the other things were just um, yeah details as you said shooting uh, in with a white lens um, normally makes sense so that you can decide afterwards exactly exactly well that's, that's well, a that's... sign of a, a true artist is be able to, to find that right crop like we said but uh, you know really 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 strong work you guys I really appreciated you sharing your story and your photography and uh, thank you you can tell that, that if clients are looking for photographers who really want to focus on the real person and the real uh, moments and the emotional goings on at the wedding i mean you guys would be at the top of the list so congrats <laughs> thank you very much on great work thank you so thank you um, thank you we'll put all your contact information in the in the youtube description down below but once you just tell us how people can find you or you know what's your uh, website, social media, where do you like? Yeah, to website would be would be fine. Yeah, I think so. Rosa. Yeah, website yeah. is okay. And, yeah. you, and your website For is. Sure. Um, ah, it's there it is. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> just it's um, um I have to spell. I, I can can I write it as a command? <laughs> That's okay. I'll I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the link in the description. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I just. Mm. But th Good. thanks Sorry. a lot. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you uh, coming on, and, and this was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. we too. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thanks. Thank we'll you. To talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. Thank you. Right. Bye, Would be great. Bye, Joe. Thank Have you. a good day. Bye. Bye. Thanks.